Welcome. If you're not and you're here for the presentations, we have an hour full of presentations for you. So pretty exciting stuff tonight. But first, uh, we're going to start our presentations. Uh, I do not see anybody from the Greater Palm Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau, correct? We're probably stuck in our traffic. Not that we have a lot of traffic, but we are doing a lot of road projects. So I'm going to move on to our second presentation tonight, which is Safe House of the Desert presentation. Ladies, would you like to come introduce yourself? And you have 15 minutes, or up to 15 minutes. You don't have to take it all. Yeah, right to the podium right here. OK, hello, everyone. My name is Brigitte Phillips, and I'm with Safe House of the Desert. We are a shelter for youth in crisis located in Thousand Palms. We service kids ages 11 to 17 and 18 to 22 if they're homeless or at risk to be homeless we have harrison house so these are young adults that can come to us and live with us up to 18 months and we will uh, help them find jobs and once they do have a job that they will um, put 50 percent of their check into savings therefore when they leave the program they'll have money for first and last month's rent and all the life skills that they need uh, we also work with human trafficking survivors uh, we have we work with the human trafficking task force and when they get a victim they call us and we go out there and meet with them and give them all everything they need um, to begin their journey to become uh, not victims anymore but uh, survivors so uh, I'm also the Outreach Safe Place Coordinator, so uh, there are 54 businesses in the Coachella Valley that are a safe place site, which all 18 McDonald's in the Coachella Valley are one. And how that works is the youth will go to um, a McDonald's to the counter and say, I'm here because you're a safe place site. Uh, whoever's working there will get their name, their age, and call us at Safe House and we'll come pick them up. But also Sunline has 85 buses, that's a safe place mobile site, and how that works is the youth can get onto the bus, tell the bus driver that they need to get to Safe House and the bus driver will then call dispatch and dispatch will bring that youth to safe house um, we've helped a lot of young adults and, and kids and uh, again safe house of the desert if you'd like a tour I'll be here at the end I have brochures and if you have any questions you could um, talk to me I'm gonna turn it over now to Arlene thank you Hi everyone, hope everyone's doing well. My name is Arlene, I am the peer coordinator for Cup of Happy. Cup of Happy is a destigmatizing program to help decrease anxiety and depression and teach uh, students, youth around the Coachella Valley of uh, positive coping skills. One of the programs that we offer is CAST, it's a cope and uh, support training. It's an evidence-based curriculum that we have that increases resiliency. We also offer mentoring one-on-one -on -one with students uh, ages 16 through 25. And then lastly, we have Directing Change, where it's a film contest, uh, story building workshop about prevention and uh, suicide and, and mental illness topics and such. Uh, Cup of Happy, we work currently right now with uh, Desert Hot Springs High School. And we have worked with Palm Springs School District, Banning High School, New Horizons, uh, we have West Shores and then Coachella Valley High School as well. If any of you have any questions in regards to Cup of Happy, I do have a list of uh, brochures and resources. And um, now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Cheryl. Brigitte already spoke about Safe Place, which of course is how youth can get to the shelter. Our prevention and early intervention is, is one of the most important aspects of Safe House because our goal is to try and keep the youth from needing to come to Safe House in the first place. So the goal is to find ways that they can um, get help for any kind of stress or crisis that they're going through so that we don't end up with a, a full-on mental health issue. And part of that is our What's Up Safe House app. I'm the coordinator for What's Up Safe House, and it's a text and app program that's available to youth um, 16 to 24, and it gives them access to counseling 24 hours a day, seven days a week for free, and it's anonymous. So they're able to just pick up their phone and use the app or text the number and get immediate help so it's usually within three minutes maybe at the most that they'll get a response and then they're able to converse with the counselor so that anything that's going on in their life that counselor can walk them through and the counselor may offer them resources we've had a lot of um, I would say I think well I wrote down some stats here out of 2084 texts 
we did have about four to five percent of those were suicides, youth with suicidal ideation. So the counselor needed to talk them down from the suicide thought and then refer them to counseling. And I'm sure that you're aware already of the statistics, but um, the Riverside University Behavioral Health put out a report recently that showed that between 2007 and 2017 that the suicide attempts rose 53% in Riverside County. Now that's across all ages. And then the deaths by suicide rose 30.1%. So we all know there's been an uptick. And then with youth, 39% of those numbers were 15 to 24 year olds. So we can see that there's a need. But the good news is the app is working because we have been able to serve so many youth and 40% have been referred out even just in the last month. So September we had 2,084 texts or app uses. That, that means there's a lot of kids reaching out and using the app. So the app is working. So our mission today is to make sure that the city of Desert Hot Springs is aware of not only the app program for the youth, but also all of the other intervention programs we have, such as Arlene's Cup of Happy program. Um, and we're trying to get in the school and, and really be a part of the team that helps keep youth safe. So thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, we're happy to answer. Yeah, I'll open up to questions right now. But before that, I just want to say thank you for what you do for our, our Valley uh, Safe House has been. Uh, when, did you, when was the organization found, founded? Does anybody know? Uh, yeah, in, in, we've been open uh, 13 years. 13 now, we years. We have now. a safe house out in Riverside that's yeah. been operating for 27 years. Yeah, I remember thir about 13 years ago when it first came to the Valley. And um, it was uh, struggling at first. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people got behind it, and it's just been mm -hmm. a, a perfect opportunity to help the youth in our in our in our region. And I know you two ladies have been part of it for a long time, a big supporter of Desert Hot Springs. So thank you. Um, regional Access Project helped them. They put three years of um, funding mm -hmm. with them, and it was a good idea. But yes. you didn't mention the name of the app, and it is very important. So it's we, the What's Up Safe House app. It's called What's Up Safe House. And you can download it um, on Apple, any of the Play, Google Play, I think. And I have cards and I have posters. I have anything that you need. There's a Thank table you. back there. Feel free to leave some if you choose. Gary? Yeah. Um, amazing, amazing organization. Uh, I commend you. You guys are doing fantastic stuff. And I just learned about it a couple of weeks ago when we were uh, having a meeting with Dr. Granger up at uh, Painted Hills Middle School, who speaks very highly of you. And he walked me through it, Howes. And I, I think it's an absolutely wonderful model organization. I thank you guys for coming and uh, very happy to help support wherever we can. Leave the brochures, leave the other stuff. And I'm going to call you up. I want to go on a tour uh, when I can here in the next I'd couple of weeks. To give you a tour. So thank, thank you again. You. Gentlemen, you. anything? <coughs> thank you guys Very again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next presentation um, is going to be the Greater Palm Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau annual update presentation. Scott, you got stuck in our traffic. <laughs> we just knew you were, uh, were going to be right behind them, so I flipped them real quick to have them start. And have some handouts? So yeah, if you just give them to the clerks, they'll bring them over to us. Start selling tickets. You got a good audience tonight. That's good. <laughs> they knew you were coming. I've got uh, well, mayor, members of the council, and city staff. Thank you for the opportunity to give you an update. I'm Scott White with the Convention and Visitors Bureau. We're going to talk a little bit about tourism. Next to me is Colleen Pace. She's our chief marketing officer, and she makes uh, all of our dreams come to reality. So we're going to go through a little bit of this. Stop us at any time if you have any questions. We want to make it interactive, um, and we look forward to sharing with you an update on really the health and uh, wellness of tourism in the whole entire Coachella Valley and specifically for Desert Hot Springs obviously. Just a real quick reminder, uh, we're still on a 10-year kind of tourism development plan. Our goal is to attract 16 million visitors by the year 2026. There's a little word cloud up there. It kind of talks about the things that are important to growing tourism. Obviously a lot of that is access into the destination, air service, rail, which we've been working on with uh, Riverside County Transportation Commission. Um, and then focusing on our pillars, health and wellness, which obviously is near and dear to Desert Hot Springs with the well springs, uh, the mineral springs, arts and culture, outdoor adventure, um, education, workforce development. We've been getting involved with the last few years because hotels have had obviously a difficult time attracting and retaining workforce. Um, but we've really had a, a great plan and we're, um, we're about seven years away 
um, on the plan and we're going to continue to move forward. We're going to talk a little bit about how all of these different components come together to hopefully achieve the same goal that we all have, which is bring more visitors to the destination and grow revenues for all of our cities and our business partners. The first one is just a real quick um, update on our economic impact for the destination. Just as a reminder, in 2017, we do a study every two years, so we'll do a study for 19 as well. But tourism attracted over $7 billion to the economy here locally, 51,000 jobs, that's both direct and indirect, which is, means one out of every four jobs is tourism related in the Coachella Valley. Uh, and so we'll do this 2019 study in early 2020 by Tourism Economics. We should have something by the first quarter, maybe late second quarter on how we did in 2019, but all indicators are showing real positive growth. One of the new things that we've been kind of embarking on is we want to know where people are working in the tourism industry. We surveyed about 100 businesses, and on the next chart you can see um, Desert Hot Springs retains about 12% of the workforce in the tourism industry, well over 5,000 people that we've monitored from those 100 businesses. And we know there's thousands of businesses. We have well over 2,000 on our website that are in this, so we have a long ways to go to continue to dig and find the information about that. But it's really, a, I think, a good representation on how important tourism is to all the communities throughout the Coachella Valley. So you can see the information there as well. And then the next slide talks a little bit about the number of visitors. So right now we're tracking about 13 million visitors a year into the destination. A little more than half of them, or a little less than half of them, sorry, is actually overnight visitors. A little bit more than them are day trippers. And they spend a lot of money. And the last chart there I think is probably the most important. If tourism didn't exist, at the level it did today, each household would have to spend a lot more in taxes to receive the same services. So the tourism impact on Desert Hot Springs and the entire Coachella Valley obviously has great benefits to being able to support police, fire, education, all the other components that are important to a city to make sure they're um, you know, striving and doing well and succeeding. We've embarked on a new uh, venture that kind of evolves our strategic plan a little bit further. We've hired a company called uh, Next Factor. Next Factor has been doing studies all over the world. Um, and they came in and did an analysis to understand, really, is all of the communities aligned? Are we really kind of going in the same direction to make sure that we understand tourism and that we're really working together collaboratively? So they've done a lot of interviews. It took a lot of time to go around and kind of measure the success that we're having here. And so the next chart shows the number of people that were, I think, interviewed. So we had almost 500 people participate in the survey, a nice broad base in the local community. And we also had people outside of the community as well, meeting professionals and other uh, travel experts in the industry give us feedback about our destination. And it was really a nice uh, report. It's a huge report that we have up on our website, but I just wanted to give a, just a quick overview. What we've got here on this, on this plotting is there's four quadrants, and it really helps the destination understand where they are in the process. Are they emerging destination? Are they established destination? Is there community engagement, or is there weakness? So for the Coachella Valley, we have strong community engagement, so it's very strong. Everybody here understands the importance of tourism, and we're working together to make sure that we can really attract our market share away from other competing destinations like Arizona, Southern California, Nevada, and so forth. But the nice thing that you see on here is really the cities really came back with the same sentiments, understanding that um, really working together to try to grow the destination and that we've, we're an established tourism destination. But the important thing that we took from this is that we have to kind of keep the the foot on the gas pedal, so to speak. And so through that, again, what came to the top was transportation. How do we grow air service into the destination? As you all know, we lose about you know, two thirds of our air service in the summertime. So we need to bring in like a Southwest or how do we grow um, rail service into the destination, better public transportation? How do we make sure we have bikeability and walkability in our destination as well? Engagement with the visitors. That's why we did the certified tourism ambassador program. We're going around and we're trying to certify the employees uh, or anybody, police, fire, anybody that's kind of engaging with the public about the destination awareness and ambassadorship program. Community support, working with the residents, growing education, tourism hospitality programs at both Cal State and COD, working with both of those. One thing that kind of came up as well is public Wi-Fi. You know, do people have access to information? If they don't have access to Wi-Fi, they're not able to search for things to do um, and have um, opportunities to uh, explore the destination through online um, browsing and Googles, and also groups that come to the destination find that as important as well. And then another weakness is we, we need more large scale uh, meeting venues and facilities throughout the Coachella Valley to attract those types of groups that create great compression for our destination. So, go back one. So we decided it was very popular among the cities and with a lot of our partners, Destination Next, we've actually now engaged them a little bit further. Um, so we've hired them to do a city experience plan. So they're actually going to do uh, individual city plans for each of the cities. 
So we're working, Bob's working with Luke. We're gonna set up interviews. They're coming back the end of October, early November. So hopefully you're all available. We wanna make sure that Paul and his team has an opportunity to work with the staff and all of you to get your feedback about um, any opportunities, things that are happening, dreams, desires, and so forth. And uh, for those of you that have been to our JPA meeting, I know Mr. Gardner, you were there and you got to see some of the case studies that Paul introduced back in June. And that's what they'll start to develop is, here's some case studies and opportunities for Desert Hot Springs to grow tourism in the destination. And then there'll be an opportunity, if the city would like to, you can even bark further. He's providing some great opportunities for you to dig a little bit deeper into this um, strategic plan study. So we're gonna give an update now on our four pillars that we've really been focused on for the last four or five years. I'm gonna turn it over to Colleen. She can talk about the fun stuff. Thanks, Scott. As Scott mentioned, we focus on these four pillars, health and wellness, outdoor adventure, arts and culture, and culinary. And I'm gonna talk a little bit specifically about Desert Hot Springs and how we have promoted these pillars within your city. So the first, um, the first item I'd like to talk about is the 10 day challenge. So we have a sponsorship where we partner and collaborate with Wanderlust, which is part of Wellspring event. That's first kickoff year was last year. Um, and what we do is we collaborate with them on a 10 day fitness challenge. So this happened over the course of 10 days, July 29th through August 7th. And one of the filming locations that we had was at Two Punch Palms here in Desert Hot Springs. That was pushed out on all of their channels as well as all of our channels. And then we also featured Desert Hot Springs partners on these three articles mentioned here. Two other content pieces as well um, for health and wellness. We have a locale article that was written for the four most relaxing hot springs you can find in desert hot springs. So this article actually launched September 19th and of the 25 articles that we've done with Locale Magazine, this is the top performing article from September 29th through the 30th. It had over 2,000 views, whereas the average article that we're doing has about 400 views. So this is a very popular subject for people. We also had a USA Today article that performed 102% of our benchmark. So again, very interested in the hot springs and the health and wellness in desert hot springs. We also featured um, two partners actually in Desert Hot Springs, Two Bunch Palms, um, as well as We Care Spa in this health and wellness feature in Travel Zoo. So this was sponsored content. Um, this received over a thousand clicks to the individual partner websites that I just mentioned. And these are all complimentary. So we, we sponsor that with Travel Zoo and provide it back to the partners for free. Mm. My clicker. Y'all need to do that pose in order for it to go <laughs> yeah. to the next slide. Uh, I don't know. Are we supposed to get up and... <laughs> They're going to reset it for you here. Okay, thank you. Try to uh, click uh, it if you can. Get up and pose for that. <laughs> go ahead and try to click. No? Uh -oh. Can you guys manually click? We're building a whole new city hall, and new technology. We're getting rid of all this stuff. A little optimistic. That's all going to go perfect. I'm hoping. I'm. Yeah. You know, uh, staff has been walking through with them to make sure we just approved the. Uh, Can I talk about that? Okay. Okay. The rock. Next slide. There you there we go. go. Hey. Okay, so these are just a couple examples of health and wellness events that we post on our website. Again, posting events is a free, um, free. You can do that on our website at any time. Any of the partners can. And these are two health and wellness specific events that we have posted with the page views that have been listed for each of those. And then one, one other component. We're also working with CVAG <laughs> and um, the Friends of the Desert uh, Mountains to authorize trails. We have a lot of trails in the Coachella Valley that kind of go back and forth between private land and public land and so forth. So we're working with Friends of the Desert Mountains to verify that the trails are authorized, um, get them loaded up on the website, and then we're working with CVAC to create signage. So you can see there, we're hoping to have signage, work with the cities obviously to have signage put um, around the valley so as you're driving you know that there's access to hiking trails. So as a visitor is traveling throughout the Coachella Valley on our roads, they, they wouldn't even know that we have these many hiking trails and great hiking trails. So we're doing um, a, um, a, a mobile enabled website and all of these uh, enhancements over the next few years as well. 
All right, on to arts and culture, uh, Desert X that was just here this year. Uh, one of, as you know, there were a few locations here in Desert Hot Springs. We did highlight those in this article. This was a blog regarding the West installations and that received almost 8,000 views. Our arts app, so we launched this in August, uh, so just a couple of months ago. This is all of our public art. So Desert Hot Springs has 14 pieces listed in this app. It's been downloaded by 95 people so far. 87 people agreed to use the data from here, and 2,000 people viewed the app in the App Store. It's been created by a, a, oh, yeah. a student at Cathedral City High School. Um, so he created the app originally, and we helped enhance it with him. We haven't really started pushing it out. We haven't marketed it yet. That's why we don't have that many downloads. Uh, we wanted to make sure that people that we knew were using the app and kind of testing all the bugs. Yep. But I think we're in a good spot. And it really is an opportunity. If you, if you use the app, you can use it by map or by listings. It gives you directions on how to get there. It talks about the artist. So we really wanted people to get around the, the destination to explore these great public art installations. How does art get on that app? Uh, we worked with the city, so th every city uh, submitted what art they wanted. So we worked with your team at the city to get the images, the descriptions, the locations, and so forth. And so we if we have a new piece of art or yes. a mural go up, we just have the city work with you to exactly. get it on there? Correct. Got yes. So that's right on the phone? Yep. Yes. And, and how do you, you, how do you, you can download it's it? It's Arts the, GPS, if you look at it, it on the App Store. Yeah. Okay. You go to the App Store, Arts GPS, either Android or Apple. Okay. Download. Thank you. As part of our summer chill campaign, we launched a social media campaign, and this was actually one here at Cabot's Pueblo Museum. This was one of our highest performing social media posts that we had. Um, so it had over 600,000 impressions and almost 9,000 clicks. This outperformed all of our other postings by 590% for clicks and 193% for engagement. So this was something people are very interested in seeing. And the Chill Deals page is free to all of the partners, so people can load up as many deals as they want. And then a lot of our marketing points back to the Chill Deals page, because people are obviously looking for opportunities to take advantage of, of great deals and learn about the destination. Dine GPS, so this supports our culinary pillar. There are 21 restaurants that are listed here in Desert Hot Springs. Um, so this, again, is a continuous push that we're always, we have our channels for Dine GPS as well. So we're posting on social, blogging, putting in our content, and then we have Restaurant Week, of course, that we do at the end of May. Visitor website, so the landing page for Desert Hot Springs has received so far over 200,000 page views. Um, the top performing page views were the Hot Water Guide to Desert Hot Springs, the City Page, and Two Bunch Palms partner listing. So we are right now in the process of redesigning our complete website for the CVB. So during that process, we'll be reaching out to the city for some feedback and collaboration on what you'd like included on your page. And then there will be future opportunities for you to enhance the page and have it become your visitor page. Um, we've worked on that program with Indian Wells and we're going to continue to offer that for a nominal fee to other cities as well. The top blog posts, so these are the three top Desert Hot Springs blog posts that we have. Um, again, it's the hot water that I mentioned. This had 82,000 views and counting. This is a very popular piece. Um, unique spa treatments article and then the Desert X West locations that I mentioned. So far, Desert Hot Springs was in 97 blogs year to date. Our website events calendar, um, we posted so far 10 events year to date. Again, this is a free listing. Um, the top events that have been listed from last year were the Holiday Parade and Tree Lighting, the Hot Springs Sound Bath Meditation, the Artisan at Pueblo, and the Cultural Weekend. Partner listings, so these are the listing page views and the top viewed partners are listed here, the Spring, Two Bunch Palm, Hacienda Hot Spring, Tucson Springs Hotel, and Sea Mountain. And chill deals, so we have year to date, um, have two, 22 chill deals that have been loaded onto our website and almost 3,000 page views. Travel Zoo, so um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, we had some sponsored content there, but you also have the opportunity to have a free listing here, all the hotel partners. Currently we have 13 partners that take advantage of this, but none currently are in Desert Hot Springs. So this is an area of opportunity that we'd love to see Desert Hot Springs included in, because it is a free listing. It garners over a million dollars, or a million impressions for this, and it reaches um, over seven million people. 
Expedia, again, this is another free listing. So far in 2019, there have been 20 partners that have been had bookings at their properties for over 1.7 million out of the U.S. and eight bookings for 13,000 out of Canada. Again, it's another free program that we promote the destination and the hotels through Expedia. We do all the marketing with Expedia to make sure we get the right exposure and hopefully driving incremental mm -hmm. revenue and bookings to the, to the hotels. So it's been a, a real popular program. Anything free is always real popular. <laughs> Videos, so so far this year we have two videos. We have 461,000 views, um, 850 minutes of watched YouTube videos that feature Desert Hot Springs. Social media, so far we have 18 uh, Facebook posts and 13 posts in Instagram. So we have over 360,000 followers in Facebook. So when we do post, we have a very wide reach. So this is a great opportunity. Um, we encourage all of our partners to continue to give us content so that we can continue to promote the destination. Um, but these are just a few examples on the right of what we've posted. Chillspiration. So you can see the piece here. This was actually at the Spring Resort and Spa. This was part of the social media campaign that we did over the summer. This was uh, over 100,000 impressions, 75,000 views, and 100 engagements on this particular post on the spring. And Wanderlist. So we did a feature on unique boutique historical and historical small hotels. So this is actually, I think the next slide is going to show you that piece if you haven't seen it. Finally, a trip to Desert Hot Springs takes us straight to Morocco, the El Morocco Inn and Day Spa. The 13-room inn was first built as the Caravan Motel in the late 1950s. Today, it is much different. Once you part the colorful organza, you'll enter a whole new world. Most of the decor at the Hot Mineral Water Spa was purchased by the innkeepers in Morocco. From beads to feathers to fabric and lanterns, the goal, a relaxing mental trip to Casablanca, and perhaps the beginning of a beautiful friendship. So last but not least, on the marketing PR front, this is our media push. So basically, the team is always pitching the boutique properties, the health and wellness, um, and Cabot's Museum is very popular as well. So these are just a couple of examples of some articles. Um, the first one is in The Independent, again, regarding hot springs. The next article in The Wall Street Journal was specific to local favorites. So one of the local chefs actually highlighted this property as the Holiday House, um, from the Holiday House, Sam's Family Spa is his favorite place to visit. So that's a little plug for Desert Hot Springs as well. And then real quick, we'll wrap it up here. We're getting close to the end. I just wanted to say that we, all tourism partners are welcome to go on our website for free. So for Desert Hot Springs, we've got a total of 70 partners. 12 of them are investing partners, so they buy into different marketing programs we have. And I just wanted to highlight real quick who those are. Um, you have them in your programs. I'm not going to read them all off, but you see we have the 12 investing partners. We've got 26 hotel, resort, and vacation rental partners. Uh, we've got um, restaurant partners as well, and then attractions and business partners. Um, that you know, all get the opportunity to get that exposure on our website. And really part of our goal is to drive people to those business listings. So we really want to connect the business with the visitor to give them an opportunity to learn about the destination and hopefully extend their stay or come back in the future. We've really been embarking. We started a new tourism foundation and that really enables us to uh, raise money to go out and certify people for the certified travel ambassador program. So if we have a business that maybe can't afford the $49, or if we do the group rate at $33 to get certified, we can get them sponsored to the Tourism Foundation. We're also doing scholarship for high school kids to go off and um, go to college and universities to learn about the hospitality industry. So we're going to continue to grow that, and we're looking forward to uh, working with the entire community to make sure our, our youth of tomorrow get the opportunity to go to school and um, not have to worry about you know books and tuitions and so forth. And then the other area that we're involved in is um, air service development. Uh, we've had some new airlines come on board this year. We um, work with a company called Avion Pacific, uh, and they represent us as a destination. As you know, we 
um, can go into contracts with airlines where the airport can't. So the airport's a little bit handcuffed in the terms that they have to follow FAA regulations, so any incentives that they do have to be uh, available to all airlines where I can do, or we as a CVB can do specific deals. So Alaska Airlines started service from Payne Field, which is just uh, north of Seattle. Um, Seattle continues to grow. And then Contour goes to Sacramento now. So we entered into a minimum revenue guarantee with Contour. He was a little bit, um, obviously it's a new market for him and for us. So we wanted to make sure that they felt comfortable going into Sacramento. It's doing well. Uh, it started in, in September. And he said all of the pre-bookings going in October, November are strong. So we hope to grow that service. Everybody always asks about Las Vegas. So I think Contour in the, in the future might add Las Vegas and maybe even one other destination, poten potentially Oakland or San Jose in the future. And then you can see some um, increased frequency to Toronto, Portland, San Francisco. Atlanta is exciting. We're going to get nonstop service to Atlanta this winter starting in December, going all the way through season. And we're hoping that we can convince them to stay year round. And they're growing service to Minneapolis and Seattle. And then Sun Country added um, San Francisco. And you can see we really had some nice growth in our air service over the last few years. This is the number of seats coming into the destination. Uh, and we need, that, we need that supply in order for us to be successful. And then on the international side, we have representation in uh, the five different countries that you see there, United Kingdom, Australia, France, Germany, and China. And then we're doing special projects in South Korea, India, Italy, and some of the Scandinavian countries. And as you know, the, the Chinese market loves the Mineral Springs, and we've had FAMS up here in December, and we'll continue to, to promote that. Um, Gary and his team have brought in over 400 international clients to the destination, really doing some nice reach. And the international visitors, you know, they stay longer and they spend more money. So we really want to continue to grow that international market. Um, and then last but not least is our budget. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of where the money is coming from. 81% is coming from the T-bid, which is from the hotels. 10% from the JPA and 9% from public. And then you can see for Desert Hot Springs, it's 0.15% of the JPA. So $31,000 from the JPA formula from the city. Uh, and then the majority of that's coming from the T-bid. And then we really are uh, proud of the fact that we're spending, you know, 94 percent of that money on sales and marketing efforts, really low overhead and administrative cost um, to run the organization. We really try to, every dollar that comes in, we run ourselves like a nonprofit. So whenever a dollar comes in, we want to make sure it's going back out in an effective manner to really promote the destination and make sure that we're, um, we have the ability to, to tell the story about how great it is here to travelers, not only in California, but the East Coast, internationally and beyond. And with that, that ends our presentation. We appreciate the uh, opportunity to share an update with you and be more than happy to take any questions. Fantastic job. Um, I know, how long have you been with the CVB now, Scott? 12, Nine years. I was gonna say 12 years, nine years. I remember when you some first- Some days it feels like <laughs> yeah, I today, today it doesn't, but some days it does. Aged like us in the uh, city council, seven years for every year. Um, it, I remember one of the first things the JPA told you back then was find us a find us a plane to Sacramento. You finally did. Thank finally you. Finally did. It, was, that was, it wasn't easy. A lot of <laughs> a lot of political figures and consultants around here travel to Sacramento, so I, it was a lot easier to come out of Palm Springs than it is to drive out to Ontario. So, yeah. or have to catch two planes to get into Palm Springs. So, thank you for that. Um, been doing a fantastic job, and the growing of the tourism in our valley has been fantastic. Right. Anything I, as Gary behaved since I pointed. Gary's him. been awesome. I have to say he's he's come onto the JPA with a lot of great ideas, and we really want to support the the sand to snow initiative that he has, and we'll definitely be behind that 100%. That's uh, really one of our pillars for outdoor adventure and hiking. So we really appreciate your passion and your commitment to tourism and your destination. Gary's always uh, raising his hands, always getting involved, and we appreciate having that kind of active participation. Like to and we're going to have him in leadership here before we know it. Uh, awesome. So we're going to take more of his time up. Anyone else? So, do you know where the El Moroccan is? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I just want to say, uh, I think you guys do a great job of promoting the area, and especially here in Desert Hot Springs. I know we tend to be a little, little bit separated, uh, but you do a really good job of including us in everything. Um, you have lots of events. So I go to a lot of your events, and I just want to recognize I have two certified tourism ambassadors in here right now. Um, it's a great program that uh, I think is really good for the the workers in the industry because it gives them a little bit more enthusiasm and I know you also have little events for them that they can attend and uh, it's a nice little perk for everybody. I think it's a win-win situation. So thank you very much for that. And thank you for participating. I also want to introduce Mark Crabb. He's our chief sales officer. Uh, it takes a village to really get this done. We've got 60 employees now 
at the CVB. Um, and when I got here nine years ago, I think we had about 35 or so. So we've really grown, um, and really because of the T-bid over the last five or six years. And we've probably grown the most on the sales, marketing, public relations, the digital side, probably more than anywhere else. And then as you know, on the brand side, to do all the videos, a lot of the videos we do in-house through our production partners, but uh, with the team we have. Um, so it's, it's exciting. And, and hiring locals and working with local community leaders um, and people that are doing the production, they bring that passion versus trying to hire somebody from out of LA or somewhere else, it's not the same. So it's been great to be able to tap into the local community to do all these videos and all of this brand and marketing development. Mr. So. Mayor, I, I, you know, I sat on uh, CVB for I don't know how many years, but uh, I was always impressed with the attention that, that our little city got out of that big organization. And you know, the presentation today just shows that's continuing. And so thanks, really. Uh, you guys mean a lot to our city for the amount that we can have to contribute and everything. It's just a great deal for us. So thank you. Thanks. Keep up the good well, work. You guys mean a lot to us. We want you to be successful. We need everybody to be successful. So we do know we, we have the only hot natural mineral water. Exactly. <laughs> thank you Thanks, so much. Scott. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to move on tonight. Uh, our next item is the recognition of the lead leadership, education, action, and development group number one. And I know I have a couple individuals that are going to join me at the dais. Uh, or at the podium, uh, Pam, and then uh, I'd like Lynn to join me also. You want this? I got one, thank you. Do you need an extra one? Um, in a continuing effort to increase employee engagement and plan for succession, the HR department offers various staff development opportunities. This year we developed and offered a program that emphasized leadership, education, action, and development called the LEAD program. Employees who are interested in learning more about city management's philosophy and approach to public service, understanding how each department functions both independently and cohesively, Sharpening their leadership skills and making a difference in the community were invited to apply for the program. Employees selected to join were obligated to commit to attend all the training <laughs> sessions, participate in all the activities, and to work together as a team to decide on and complete a community project. The city manager and each department head were each scheduled to facilitate a meeting with the participant group and provide operational insight regarding their department and how their department contributes to overall city goals while focusing on collaboration, communication, and teamwork. They also share, shared their knowledge and experience and answered questions developed by the participant group. Our very first participant group is on the agenda later this evening to provide a staff report to you on their community project. However, uh, we wanted to take a few minutes to introduce them individually and proudly recognize the time and effort they dedicated to participating in the program. I'm not going to read every certificate because we'll be here for a long time, but I'll have the ladies uh, help us hand these out in a, in a minute. Uh, but basically, it's a certificate of recognition. The mayor and the city council of the city of Desert Hot Springs hereby honors in recognition of your con uh, contribution and participation in the city of Desert Hot Springs LEAD program. We want to thank all the city staff that participated in this. Um, large corporations out there usually uh, usually have some sort of leadership program and they get out and, and they try to do good things not often do you find smaller cities or corporations or even small businesses that go up and beyond and I feel our city manager has set the bar high for our staff and I want to thank our human resources office for putting this together and for you participating in it uh, it meant a lot to me as a community member to see you the staff members out there recently at the community event and letting yourself be known to the individuals a lot of times they come to us the city council with their issues because it's easy to get a hold of us and yell at us for it and you're the front line a lot of times that come in and get the brunt of what they're upset with the city council about but you were there you opened up to the public and it was a wonderful event so i'll let you announce the names and you can bring them up you can pass them on to lynn and she'll okay virginia alvarez McVeigh. Colleen Michael. Thank you. 
Angelica Villalobos. Patricia Villagomez. Melissa Purcell. And our leader of the group is Lynn Paul. Now, with my pleasure to invite up, you know, I th think this is the last time I'm going to say this title, our Acting Police Chief Jim Henson to give uh, the Police Department's uh, life-saving awards. And I know I did not forget my badge, so you guys don't get, don't get on me. At this time, I'd like to call out Sergeant Saucier and uh, Corporal Hazen up. Come on up. On August 14, 2019, officers was dispatched to the area of Acoma and Cactus on a report of shots fired and a man down. Corporal Hazen was the first to arrive, followed by Sergeant Saucier. The two officers were able to apply a tourniquet and the male was transported to Desert Regional Medical Center for treatment. Um, if they did not put that tourniquet on, we would have had a homicide. Um, they, saved the, they saved the individual's life by doing what needed to be done. This shows you these two officers not only go out to calls to try to catch the bad guys, they're here to pre prevent uh, you know, life from being lost. And actually, this is Saucier's second tourniquet. I believe uh, two years ago he had a suspect go through a window trying to get away from him and not only did he catch the suspect but he, he treated him and that was another um, incident where he could have got a life-saving award. So I want to thank, thank both officers for their uh, courage. And some of you may not recognize him because he doesn't have his helmet on, but that's the motor officer. Okay, we're going to make them say something. Uh, first, Sergeant Saucier. They always do this to me. They always put me on the spot. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of cliche. People say it's just, you know, it's our job. It, it really is our job. We go out every day and just try to help the community, and sometimes we're in the right place at the right time. So, fortunately, that's how it was this time. Come on, Scotty. <laughs> Corporal Hazen. The motor officer. So now you guys the time. don't appreciate him. He's going to write you a ticket when you leave. So. I <laughs> uh, just just want to say thank you for the recognition. It's uh, nice. Um, you know, like again, it just happened to be right place, right time. I was only a block away from when the call first came out, and I was actually on a traffic stop writing a citation to someone. Is one of the ones that I let go to get over to uh, help this individual. So I uh, just went over there and tried to, you know, do my best efforts and it paid off. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And we, uh, so the city council gave them both recognitions also for their service. Thank you, gentlemen, for what you did. Jeffrey, would you like to join me up here? So now we move on to the mayor presentations. Uh, I have two tonight that I would love, I, I really want to do. This is awesome for the city. Uh, recently we had, uh, Linda was with us for 20 years, right? 23. 23 years. She was our finance director and when she left us a few months ago, uh, Jeffrey was uh, her right hand and we appointed him as the acting finance director. Jeffrey uh, has worked in government finance since 1940, 1940? <laughs> wow. You're so young. <laughs> it's the hot water in Desert Hot Springs. The fountain of youth, 1994. Uh, he earned a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration with an emphasis in finance from Humboldt State University. He also holds a, a certified management accountant designation. Uh, before moving to the Coachella Valley, he worked for the cities of San Bruno, the city of Mellow Park, and the city of Alameda. He was hired to the city of Zahat Springs in May of 2018 as the finance manager and took over the role as acting finance director in June of 2019. During this time, Jeffrey completed the 2019-2020 budget and has demonstrated his ability to excel in the role of finance director. Please join me in congratulating Jeffrey as we appoint him as our finance director here in Desert Hot Springs. I just want, oh. I just want to say thank you. Um, enjoy this opportunity, and I was very, very proud to be part of the city of Desert Hot Springs. Chief Henson, would you join me up here? And as I said in the last comment, the last time I'll ever say acting chief. Um, this is the night that we get to appoint one of the more important, most important positions I think in our city is the police chief. Uh, sorry, Chuck. I'm gonna say it's a little more important than you. He was a chief. Yeah, he was, but still, this is the more important. <laughs> As you know, uh, a few months ago, our chief resigned and we actually uh, appointed uh, Jim as our acting police chief. Uh, chief Henson uh, has been in law enforcement for 28 years. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degrees from Ashford University in psychology and is nearing the completion of his master's degree from Cal Baptist University. His professional training includes the Sherman Block Supervisional uh, Leadership Institute and post management course, executive development, Chief joined the uh, Desert Hot Springs Police Department in 2005. He worked patrol and detectives division before being promoted to sergeant in April of 2015. On February 7th, 2015, he was promoted to commander and on March 6th, 2017, he was promoted to the rank of deputy chief. Jim also, uh, Jim was responsible for overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the de uh, department and continued in his position until he was appointed as acting police chief in May 24th, 2019. Chief Henson uh, has multiple, received multiple awards during his tenure, including the Officer of the Year for 2009 and 2011, the Mayor's Award in 2019. He has proven the City of Desert Hot Springs Police Department and our community exceptional service over the last 14 years, and I am pleased to announce that today we appoint Jim Henson as a Police Chief for the City of Desert Hot Springs. <laughs> I'm gonna invite our city clerk up. I also uh, would like you to introduce your son. Okay, we're not being taken over by the sheriff's department, but <laughs> this is my son. He's gonna put the badge on me. Other than this, this is what I'm most proud of. Um, every time I run into the sheriff's department admin, they tell me how wonderful a job he's done. Even though I didn't want him to get in law enforcement, I'm really proud of him. And I also have to, I wanna introduce one other person that apparently beat him out here. Um, back when she was 16, she did a shoulder tap operation, so she went to 7-Elevens and some of the other stores and tried to buy alcohol as a 15 or a 16 year old. 
and unfortunately she did find some places that sold her, but my daughter Brittany, stand up. <laughs> and the, those are my two uh, godchildren, or grandchildren, <laughs> God. All right. So we're gonna have the pinning of the badge right now. And don't leave your cameras up. I'm going to have the city clerk come up and swear him in. Okay, please raise your right hand. Do you, uh, Jim Henson, Chief of Police for the City of Desert Hot Springs, solemnly swear or affirm that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic? that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which you are about to enter. Congratulations. Just real quick, uh, I've been accused of not watching social media, so hold on one sec. Okay, so I do have a sense of humor, and I get the Muppet and Fozzie jokes that are on the internet. So this shows that I do have a sense of humor and I do watch social media. Um, just a couple other things. Um, this isn't about me. Um, and in my tenure as a chief of police, I want you guys to understand that I'm just, I'm just here to provide the, provide the equipment for the officers that actually do the job. Been doing this for two to three years. I don't want to be the face of the department. The face of the department is right out there. Um, so I want, the, I want all the police officers, code enforcement and animal control, come on up here so that we could get another picture with the actual Desert Hot Springs Police Department, the face of the department. And while we have you funnel up, I have one more presentation to Chief Henson that I'd like to make. Uh, the family would like to stay up here also. Um, we are presenting Chief Henson today with the Distinguished Service Award. Uh, this Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to members of the department who have uh, demonstrated exceptional service over a prolonged period. This award is not intended to recognize length of service. The demonstrations, uh, achievements, uh, and ex expo expo uh, exceptional, sorry, Performance of duty shall clearly be above that which would normally be expected, given the rank and assignment, and shall have contributed uh, materially to the mission of the department. Chief, you've been with the department a long time. You've been the day-to-day -day person to put people on the streets and make them safe, and I, I think that's noble of you to invite all these people up here that work behind you, but it's, it's, it's you that does this. So with that, we like to give you this. And recognize you can put this on your wall. Bigger than most we give out, so. <laughs> and we want to thank you again. Thank you. And like I said, this is the face of the department. The individuals that work back here, that are here night and day, um, I know I get teased a lot about being here all the time, but I'm not. Um, these are the actual people that are actually doing the, doing the work. Um, code enforcement, um, cannabis compliance, animal control, um, detectives, the patrol officers, and my admin staff. And I just want to 
also say a special thanks to Mark Garcia, who's out here um, doing an audit for us. So these are, the, these are the individuals that should be the face of the department. Um, at the end of my tenure, I want you guys to be able to recognize them. Um, know who you can call to for, for help. It's not the chief of police that you need to call. It's these individuals back here, and they'll get the job done for you. And just one last thing, um, Brittany, why don't you come over so I could get a picture. Um, Saturday, I got a text message, and I didn't recognize the phone number, and apparently it was Sh uh, Sheriff Bianco that was at a picnic with my daughter, and he decided to send me a picture with my daughter. So I don't know if I'm her favorite police chief, but I'm one of them. <laughs> That's all the presentations we have tonight. If you want to take pictures, feel free to do so. Thank you. Yeah, now we really want you guys. No, I thought you might want to share some of your um If I can get the council to work their way back up to the dais, we're going to get started. Martins are on vacation. Except for, except All right, Melissa, that's enough. I'm joking. <laughs> She doesn't come to many meetings, so we gotta give her a hard time when she does. This is the City of Desert Hot Springs regular meeting of the City Council, and the City Council serving as a successor agency to the Redevelopment Agency Board for October 15th, 2019. Uh, this is a 6 p.m. regular meeting at the Carl May Center here in Desert Hot Springs. Roll call, please. Council Member Betts. Present. Council Member Gardner. Present. Council Member Griffith. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Pai. Present. Mayor Mattis. Present. Or is there anybody from the Ministerial Fellowship or anybody would like to give an invocation tonight? I see none. I will move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Would everybody please stand and I'll have Mr. Griffith lead us in the... Oh, wait, I did last week, didn't I? Or did I last week? You did last week. Okay, then I'll have Mr. Griffith lead us this week. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, 
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll move on to the city attorney's report on closed session. Ms. Murray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. We have no reportable action this evening. The approval of the agenda at this time, the city council uh, may amend the order of the agenda um, and uh, approve the consent calendar as in whole. Would anybody like to pull anything from the consent calendar? I see nobody. I will accept a motion to approve the agenda as is. So moved. Second. There is a motion and a second on the screen. Any discussion? Is there any comments on consent calendar items by the public? I see none. Uh, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll have public comments. At this time, pursuant to the Brown Act, any person may comment on matters of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council not listed on the agenda. Under the Brown Act, the City Council shall not take action on or discuss matters raised during public comment portion of the agenda that are not listed on the agenda. All comments are to be directed to the City Council and shall be devoid of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain professional, courteous decorum during public comments. First comment I have is Eddie Johnson, followed by Mr. Gupta. Microphone. That microphone is not on. Loud enough, I can talk without this. Is this better? <laughs> Much better. Now they can hear you on TV. Oh, no. Well, let me shine my head. Uh, anyway, my name is Eddie Johnson. I'm a Bedmans Park caretaker. First, I'd like to present to you, this is Fred. No, it's not. This is my Purple Heart flag, and I've, made, I've had Sharon Hip decide to design and make sleeves for a military branch flags that cities have. Our city has the flags put in boxes all the time, and they're getting kind of beat up a little bit. So this sleeve right here is red, white, blue, stars and stripes, they tie above the eagle. And this is the Purple Heart flag, which I will also present back to the city after the uh, 10th and the 11th of Veterans Days. Uh, but anyway, uh, Sharon Hepp was kind enough to make these so we could have the uh, military brass flags protected in the box, and I hope you approve of that, okay? Also, the Veterans Park caretaker, the Veterans Park is looking awesome. It's green again. Love it up there. Uh, uh, also, I just had an idea about this water tank that uh, everybody's talking about maybe painting it. Have you thought about maybe doing a wrap on that? Because a wrap will last longer than the paint will on the water tank. Water tank painting with all the sand damage out here would probably last three years, where the wrap, like the sun bus, has lasted for a long time, and maybe you'll be able to wrap that. Um, that's my kind of theory. Also, on... Uh, on November 7th, in Lakita High School, I know it doesn't have anything to do with Desert Hot Springs, but they do an Honor Our Hero Day that's called Feed Our Heroes. And any um, first respondent, that's police, fire, uh, ambulance people, and also veterans, they do a luncheon out there for them. And this is called Feed the Heroes. And it'll be starting at 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, like I say, on November 7th. And they're having turkey, ham, mashed potatoes, dressing, the whole thing that you'd have on a Thanksgiving dinner. And this is their way of saying thank you. I hope sometime in the near future, Desert Hot Springs can do the same thing with Desert Hot Springs High School. Also, on Veterans Day, November 11th, Palm Springs is hosting their 23rd Veterans Day Parade. And it starts at 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, I've done 20 years of this. I've enjoyed it. Uh, um, I'm going to be hopefully behind the high school band in Desert Hot Springs in my PT Cruiser. So I get to ride in the parade this year. So I'm very honored with that, too. And uh, I also want to thank, uh, well, I think Lynn Paul has left, but Lee gave me a nice thank you letter, and everybody signed it for me for all the help I did to help with them on the, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> to help with me. She's paying me 10 bucks for this. But I want to <laughs> put it towards the wall. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank them all very much for letting me be a part of that. And they also made a donation towards the Vietnam Honor Wall of $413. Thank you very much for that. That's awesome. I thank the brave people, like I said before, as the mayor, 
um, Mr. Griffin and also Gary Gardner here for getting on the tank and coming out looking blue as they did when they went in. <laughs> the wind was really bad, but everybody had a good time. And like I say, I hope we can do that next year again. And thank you, Lynn, and thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Eddie. you. We don't have a timer tonight. Usually you have three minutes on the clock back there. I'll start the timer here. I'll give you a notice when there's uh, 30 seconds left. Mr. Gupta, is it Shen Shenjai? Yes, all right, good. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Officials, and Council Members, and Police Chief. Uh, my name is Sanjeev Gupta. I'm Chairman, Co-Founder of IREP International, LLC based in Palm Springs. Uh, we are a recent small business startup and member of Coachella, Coachella Valley Economic Partnership, Joe Wallace, Augusta, and those guys. Um, IREPA is a certified value-added reseller of computers and other office equipment. Um, in addition, we also transform cities into smart cities with a variety of IoT, Internet of Things, assets. Um, all of these are from Tech Data Corporation. Um, and, and, and what some of these, uh, some of these IoT transformation um, assets can transform your city in terms of smart healthcare, smart buildings, um, smart parking, lighting, um, security and surveillance in the city and schools, uh, as well as um, smart education, smart factories in the cannabis industry, agriculture, and much, much more. So we look forward to serving your technology needs um, in the desert hot springs, and now into the future. So how can we serve you better? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome. Mr. S S Sine? I, I know I'm saying that wrong. I am so sorry. S-A-I-C-E. I'm sorry. How do you say your last name? Sine. Sine. I was close. I was very close. Thank you. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, city councilor and mayor. My name is Harjit Saini, and I am the owner of the AMPM 12775 Palm Drive, Desert Hot Spring. And uh, my humble request to you guys, I have a the, I have the vacant lot in behind the AMPM, and I want to combine the property, and I want to bring a, any different franchise business there, and I want to put a couple more pumps there. So my request to pay the fees and let me combine the parking lot so make it a little better for the city. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll get some of our city staff with you and get you a path to where your request is. Mr. Levy, you're back in town. Followed by John Roth. And that is the last speaker card I have. After John, if you want to speak, there's blue cards in the back. These are items not on the agenda. You must fill this out and give it to our clerk. Mr. Levy, the mic is yours. Thank you. Um, I've known Mr. Saney about five or six years. Uh, when Russell was initiating the um, fireworks out at Mission Lakes, Mr. Saney uh, donated soft drinks and sodas and juices and chips for the per workers that were um, there working setting up. He's also just recently uh, donated uh, bicycles for uh, the veterans um, raffle and at Christmas time our holiday not his he donated uh, soft drinks sodas and candy and chips and things again to the people that were outlined in front of his store during the Christmas parade so he's somebody that gives back to the community he's also one of the if not the uh, highest produ producing tax uh, revenue coming in from businesses in this city and I think it would be beneficial for us to approve his request to waive any of the uh, initial fees for merging the two properties and getting it onto the general plan. And he's going to planning to put four more pumps in, and that'll bring the revenue up for the city even more. Thank you. Thank you. And our last request tonight, John, John is it John Roth? Ruth. John uh, is my last speaker tonight. Anybody would like to speak must fill out a blue card in the back and give it to the city clerk. Last call. John, the microphone is yours. I had a, had a heck of a time in high school. I, I was old Ruth, old Ruthie. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, I wanted to speak about um, the speeding on Mountain View. 
you know, we have people speed sometimes all over the city, but on that particular road, uh, people are sometimes going 60, 70 miles an hour, and I know two people personally who has lost a, a relative by someone that was either speeding or speeding and drinking. And so I, what I was uh, just kind of suggesting, what I'm suggesting, is that if, like, like if we had a, a, a police presence on one of the four streets that go from Hacienda, occasionally people might slow down <laughs> uh, or something like that. And um, that's the main thing. And I guess there is one more. Um, uh, the, um, I'm on Social Security Disability, and I was in a homeless shelter for a year, and I'm now in an apartment with my son. We've been there three and a half months, and they're going to raise our rent uh, in December. And I understand that in the, in the state that they're going to make it so that there's a cap so you can't do that. So I was wondering if there was some way that I could dis, um, dispute uh, having the rent raised when I've only been there three and a half months. I don't know if, if it's a proper thing to bring up here, but uh, I appreciate um, the, the opportunity to speak to you. Mr. Ruth, it's always proper to bring your concerns to the City Council. I have uh, staff from the Police Department and our city staff that will meet with you out there to get some of your concerns answered, okay? I really uh, respect the Police Department. In we do city. too, we like them. Thank you. Awesome. I have no other blue cards. This is the last call. Anyone would like to speak in public comments? I see no one standing. I'll close public comments at this time. We'll go to City Manager's report. Mr. City Manager? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Danny, uh, are you ready to make your report on uh, Palm Drive? Yes, perfect. <clears throat> we'll start with Palm Drive entryway. The Palm Drive entryway uh, has been 100% complete. We actually fine tuned some of the up lights. So now we have programmable lights on the entryway of both sides and the median and we will be programming them and changing the lights uh, throughout the entire year. The Palm Drive ATP Cycle 3 project, the one that's going on for the sidewalks and street lights. Uh, currently we're completing some ADA ramps and some concrete work on the uh, east side of the street and Spectrum will begin working on the west side of the street, uh, undergrounding those poles and undergrounding those wires. Uh, that should begin on Monday. Uh, Palm Drive, the two new traffic signals. We had our pre-construction meeting last week and some augering will begin in two to three weeks on Palm Drive Desert View and on Pearson and Choya. And our Palm Drive Phase Two, the construction will be awarded uh, at City Council on the second meeting of November. And we do have our Palm Drive street name signs going up. Majority of intersections have been installed. We are still troubleshooting a couple of signs that aren't uh, working with our photo cells, but we will have those all up and running. Uh, thank you, and that concludes my staff. Question. Danny, when's the paving start? The paving will begin right after Spectrum uh, runs all of their, their undergrounding uh, conduit for those poles. We expect them to be done between three to four weeks. So about three to four weeks. Right, thank you. Mr. Betts has a question. I, I just want to say that uh, I've gotten a lot of comments from people about how nice those lights work and what a great job. And um, you know, I was down there looking at them. I've taken three trips down there to show people. And I'm standing around and everybody just loves them. And I did have one request come in could you pipe in music and put those lights on a color organ? <laughs> it's just an absolutely fantastic job. So thank you very much to staff for getting that done. Is that all you had tonight, Mr. Yeah, Senator? Manager? Long route for a I just think I'd like to say one more thing. Um, I'd like to thank Jeffrey and all his work, uh, staff and their work this last year uh, through budget savings and work that uh, they've done to ensure that the uh, the city continues to, to move upward when it comes to uh, our financial stability. We anticipated that we would wind up with a fund balance of 10 and a half million, so that's why I was doing a jig and told all of you that. We actually wound up uh, with the uh, with the, the uh, fund balance of $11 million this last year. That's awesome. And not to take away the, the that statement in any way, but the city manager did turn a year older this year or today. So, and he tried to get away with it most of the day. I think three, two thirds of the day you did. You did a good job, but unfortunately, uh, staff found out, and then Donald Lee found out. So it's all over Facebook now. So I'm not going to make everybody sing happy birthday to you, but happy birthday. Happy birthday. I just want to clarify, I'm not 70 years old. <laughs>
You sure? Okay. All right, Mayor and Council Member comments, our cues aren't working tonight, so I'll start with who? Who wants to start? Russ, you want to start that end or you want me to start down here? Okay, usually goes first. You want the honors? Okay, I'll start with Jen. <laughs> She's not shy. I just got today a uh, fast pitch, which is happening uh, through Regional Access Project, and it's on November 20th from 2 to 5, and one of the uh, contestants is oh God, Irene Rodriguez of Cabot's Museum, and they give the... Um, people who are contestants. She, she tried last year, and they did give her, I think, $2,000, but if she can win further, she can get a lot more money. And so anybody can come to that. And again, it's on November 20th from 2 to 5 p.m. Also, uh, before you leave that, I just want to let everybody know we're also scheduled a presentation for Cabot on November 5th meeting, the next meeting here in the Carl May. Uh, we do have a special meeting before that, but November 5th meeting presentation, she'll be coming and talking a lot more about that also. Also, uh, Riverside County is asking state stakeholders for volunteers for the next pit count. And there are several dates on here, but if you're interested in the next Pit count, email me and I will send you the information. Um, I want to thank Adrian Sedin of Clandescent. Uh, I want to thank him for being <laughs> environmentally responsible uh, by putting solars and etc. <coughs> on on his site. Um, it's a good thing for clandestines, but it's also a good thing for us, and I want to thank Andrew for that. Uh, I attended the, attended the LILAC meeting, which is literary, language, and cultural events, and they have two new members who are Augustine Aragon and Roger N Nunez, and I think that they're uh, very good people for LILAC. Uh, I'm on the advisory committee there. Um, homeless committee. Um, I'm on the CV Housing First 2019, and the majority of it, or the primary uh, responsibility for it, it is not just to have shelters, but to have wraparound services. Um, the main thing is not just to have people in shelters, but to give them a way out of being homeless. Um, and um, we shall have further information on that coming. Uh, during the Homeless Committee, which is on the 21st, Greg Rodriguez will be giving us an update on the cooling centers and more information on the rapid rehousing. Um, the Palm Springs Commission, A Airport Commission, I'm on that too, and on the 23rd, Palm Springs is going to have um, a council meeting, and one of them is regarding, um, they're going to redo the conveyors and the, soft and the software, but they're going to do it off-season. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because we did talk about it during the commission meeting, but I don't know if anything's changed since Palm Springs is going to meet to give approval. Um, but they are um, redoing it. Um, I attended the Community and Cultural Affairs Commission, and I was supposed to have um, a video of the senior centers uh, where they're doing arts, but I didn't get the video, so I'll do it at the next meeting. I'm done. Mr. Betts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm listening to the uh, city manager give us an update on the financial situation being uh, improved and more improved, and I'm thinking, wow, it is so much nicer than being broke. And those of us that struggled through that uh, 
it's just so much nicer to, to see the, the stuff and the improvements getting made around here. And, and something else that we're not broke on is uh, new industry, which is amazing to me. When you drive through our industrial area and look at the, uh, the new buildings that have gone up, and the mayor and I and the chief uh, were fortunate enough to get a tour of the new MedMen uh, facility. And uh, you go through there and you look and you're just seeing a brand new production facility and they are now certified online ready to go and hiring and um, and I understand vets leaf is also hiring so these are good paying jobs and mr. mayor if you could help refresh my memory I think at Bedben they were saying 17 to 21 fully benefited positions 17 to 21 that's the dollar amount you can make that's not the age group <laughs> okay yeah yeah sorry <laughs> Well, that's why I asked you to help me out here. $17 to $21 an hour, um, which is good starting pay. And with full benefits, 401k, company participation, and uh, whatever. So um, they're looking to hire. And uh, as things go, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of different places are competing for people to go work. So if you're looking to improve your lot in life or get a better job um, or get a first job, Head down there, and I'm I'm pretty certain you'll end up, uh, you know, the good-paying uh, manufacturing job. Which manufacturing jobs are the best? Now, um, the RENA, which is the Regional Housing Needs Assessment, has been in the news a lot lately, and we got some really good news for our city um, when it came to consideration of you know, our plight and how we fit into all that. And I was talking to the mayor to try and figure out, you know, how do I heck do I make this so people's eyes aren't glazing over uh, when we're trying to explain the progress that we've made here, because it gets to be really complicated. I've been working on this for a year. But the first thing is, is a lot of people are confusing the arena process with the homelessness issue, thinking, okay, well, we want more housing, and so the homeless need housing, and so this arena becomes a cause celeb for people that want to do something to help the homeless. Problem is, homeless housing is here, and this is income qualified housing that's up here, and anybody that's homeless isn't going to qualify for that housing. So that doesn't equate and doesn't mix. And then there's four different levels of housing that's, you know, low, 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 medium, mod, I don't know the four of them, but there's four layers of low-income housing, and each one of those are at a certain income qualifying level. Uh, case I've been making up at SCAG is that, you know, some of these houses go in and even our own residents don't qualify for them. You have to make a certain amount of income to be able to qualify. So we're getting these new houses coming in, but our residents are watching people from other cities coming here and enjoying this nice new housing. So I'm trying to do a push up there to say, hey, we need some funding to go in and maybe rehab existing housing or do something to try and help, you know, a lot of the residents in our city won't qualify for these. But there's 197, 191 cities and six counties that are now trying to figure out how to divide up 1.3 million. The governor is and the legislature are saying that we need to put in 1.3 million new homes. And everybody out there saying, well, you know, hey, we don't want these, we don't want these. But as the mix has worked out for us, it's actually came out to be uh, the type of homes that we will be getting here are actually going to really enhance our community and uh, be very beneficial. So anyhow, in the past, uh, we got the short end of the stick. It was a, a concentration of poverty where there's already a concentration of poverty. I mean, if we're going to be realistic about the situation here. and. HCD, Housing Community Development, and staff up at SCAG, after hearing about our plight, uh, said, you know what, that's not right, and we're not the only city with that condition. So we got together and we said, hey, we, we need a little more, more equitable distribution of this housing here so that we get a fair mix of proper housing. So I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if I ever did that any clearer, if anybody's any clearer on all that, I tried my best. I'm trying to read from my notes here, but, uh, you know, working through this issue, we've you know, putting in the time and everything, I think we've come out pretty good on that one. So if you have any questions, you can certainly uh, contact me. Now, I serve on the Airport Land Use Commission, and that's not a direct appointment of the City Council, it's a county appointment. And I've always talked about, you know, mentioned that I go there, but I'm just going to briefly explain, because somebody says, well, what the heck is it? And, you know, we don't have an airport in our city, so what, what are we doing? Um, 
but uh, we do up there. We're like basically planning commissioners weighing in on issues surrounding airports, and we have Palm Springs. At the last meeting, there was a, a issue regarding Palm Springs International Airport, and we dealt with that one. But basically, what the commission does is we protect people on the ground from airplanes. So you can't put a house right in the runway. Um, and um, so that may be, and a perfect example of that would be the, the jet that crashed into a warehouse without any fatalities up in Riverside not long ago. Uh, when that happened, all the commissioners are saying, see, proper planning, and we saved lives. If we had allowed a housing development to go right next to the runway and that jet had gone down, it would have been tragic. Um, and then we also protect airplanes from people, which would be when an airplane's coming in on approach, the glare from solar panels aren't blinding them. And you can't believe the glare studies that end up, you have to look at and read and study. So anyhow, um, that's as detailed as I need to get into that, but uh, I'm happy to, to deal with that one. I'm um, also happy to deal with your issues here. Um, you know, regular part every council member's day is people contacting us. I got a letter, came in from a resident. It came in by mail, regular old mail. And they didn't give me a phone number. And they didn't give me a email address. So to respond, I actually had to get out the, you know, do a proper letter and put it in the post office and mail. I'm waiting for them to get back to me. But email is really good if you want to do email. Um, we'll get back to you. Uh, this particular one, they were complaining because they were renting a room. And uh, they thought that the city was going to start charging them an Airbnb fee on having a room rental. Well, apparently they had advertised the room on Airbnb. It got picked up in our system. So uh, as soon as they get back to us, we'll direct them to staff and let them know that if you have a long-term room rental, that doesn't apply for the TOT tax. But either way, um, that's where that goes. Um, last thing, Halloween event coming up. Happy, healthy Halloween zombie walk. This is down at Mission Springs Park on October 31st. It's from 5 to 9 p.m. It's going to be a really good time. I know um, Jackie Chapman is doing a great job planning this out. I'm just announcing it for her. Um, maybe everybody else has got the same cards. They'll do the same thing. Um, but this should be a really good time. They're, uh, what do they got? Car and bike show, trunk or treat, which is people going to decorate the back of their, the trunk of their car like. Anyhow, um, it's really worth it to go down there and see that. So hopefully it'll be a good turnout. So just another fun event. When we were up at the lead event, somebody said, hey, we need to do this more often. Um, they, they were really, uh, even with the wind, they said, we need to do this more often. And uh, so there we are. We're doing it more often. October 31st coming up very quickly. Go down there and take care of that. I'm just really happy with the, the direction the city's going right now. We got money. We're spending it wisely. We're getting some things done that need to be done. And uh, really happy with the... Uh, the crew, and congratulations on the appointment at finance director. I find out you're also a lumberjack from Humboldt State, so that's good. I learned that tonight. And uh, while well, the chief's not here, he must be off making the city safer. Do you know we adopted a, a new motto or a new challenge here was to be the safest city in California? And I know we got some room to go, but uh, that's where we're headed. So we're, we're making some progress. Maybe the next council meeting we can get some uh, update from city staff on. Uh, how we're doing on that progress because it's, it's not an empty promise we're working there right chief or right city manager i never object to be called chief still able is one of my favorite jobs so if you want to call me chief that's fine oh, that's right. but uh that's correct yes okay so anyhow that's it mr mayor thank you mr griffith anything today tonight as always not a lot uh I, most of my time actually has been spent, um, Convention Visitors Bureau was here today and I've done quite a number of things with them, but I did attend International Walk to School Day with Mayor Pro Tem Pai for Cabot York Elementary School. I was really surprised at the number of children that actually attended uh, and were involved. There was a large number. I, I'm not good at crowd sizes, but I would say at least 70 maybe, uh, and parents, and it was a real exciting day. It was a nice day, not too hot. We all got a nice walk, got some exercise in, and um, it'd be nice if we could do that a little more frequently. So and that was about it for me. Thank you. Mr. Gardner. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, two real quick ones for me, too. Uh, attended the Desert Hot Springs Historical Society board meeting, and uh, they're reporting some great progress on the Rock House restoration. It's going to be a great addition to our city, sort of a little sister to uh, Cabot's when it's done. Uh, unfortunately, they've had to cancel this month's Soup Supper, which was to feature our Assistant City Manager, Doria Wilms. Uh, next one will be in January. We'll still feature Ms. Wilms, and I will be uh, looking forward to going to that. I wasn't going to be able to go to this month's because I want to remind everybody that uh, Diversity DHS is hosting a town hall with our new police chief, who stepped out, uh, Jim Henson, to discuss issues of concern to the LGBTQ community. That will be next Thursday, October 24th, 6 p.m., right here at the Carl May. Everybody is uh, welcome to attend that, and it uh, should be a good uh, dialogue with our new police chief. That's it. All right, and I'll finish up with just a few comments also. Um, the city manager and I like to meet with the county supervisor about twice or three times a year, and we just had our recent meeting with him just to update on things going. I want to thank him and his staff for the fantastic work they've been doing on Palm Drive. They've been working with their code enforcement department to clean up on the county side. A lot of people don't realize when you come in on Palm Drive that a lot of the east side of the south part of our city is county, and we have to work those relationships with our county supervisor to get those areas cleaned up if they become blighted, and I want to thank him and his staff for working hard on that. Stephanie and his office, his liaison to the city of Desert Hot Springs, has been uh, doing a fantastic job job. As uh, Councilmember Betts alluded to, him and I and the police chief took a tour of uh, Medmen. Uh, one of the, uh, and the reason I bring this up, I've taken a tour of a lot of them and we talk a lot about uh, what these facilities are doing in Desert Hot Springs, but I was really uh, amazed by how they're focused on hiring local. Um, they have about 30% of what they need hired right now, and out of that 30%, I believe 70% of them were Desert Hot Springs residents, so that's awesome to hear. They will be having um, a job fair soon. Uh, you can find their um, job descriptions and needs online. Uh, you can Google their, um, their website. Um, as also talked about by uh, Council Member Betts, uh, Jackie Chapman, who is the chairman of my Desert Hot Springs Healthy Cities Initiatives, uh, you'll find these flyers at City Hall, also on the back table, I believe. And this is a safe place for you to trick or treat if you choose to with your kids. Um, this is uh, an event that we put on at the Mission Springs Park in, con in conjunction with the Rotary Desert Hot Springs Rotary Club. Um, the event starts at 5 p.m. and ends at 9 p.m. Again, a safe place to come out. There's multiple um, different events going on there where the kids can get candy and be safe for the evening. Also, as alluded to in the last meeting, um, not alluded to, talked about, uh, the Food Now is having their, their fundraiser, main fundraiser this year at the Air Museum in Palm Springs, November 1st. If you're interested in that, uh, remember every dollar feed can feed up to five families in Desert Hot Springs. So if you're interested, November 1st, you can uh, Google their website or call City Hall and we can give you their information. And it's Food Now's fundraiser. And uh, holiday parade applications are still online, correct? So anyone that wants to go to the holiday parade or wants to be part of the holiday parade on December 14th, I was right, got it. Uh, Roberta Cernick over there, if you have questions, can answer those questions or you can go online, the applications are there and you can apply to be part of the parade and all the parameters I believe are on there and everything. So with that, it's gonna be starting at Mission Lakes Boulevard this year. It's going to go south on Palm Drive to Pearson Boulevard, so we don't cut the city off traffic-wise this year. And, and we get the walk downhill. Um, and then at the end of the parade will be the holiday celebration. And I believe we have the same band coming back from last year, and it's just fun rides. And not all the food is free, as I announced last year. Uh, there is going to be some free food and drink, but most of it uh, will just be some vendors there. And, we had a special announcement that the in and out truck is coming this year. So, and I don't believe that's free, but it'll at least be there. So um, please come out that night or put it on your calendar. And lastly, I, was, uh, I had a great meeting this morning. Um, I open hour, my office hours are open every Tuesday morning for the most part. If you want to schedule time, you can call City Hall and do that and get on my calendar. But I had a, uh, a visit from Ben Roberts. Ben Roberts is part of the ownership that owns the hockey rink in Palm Springs that was just announced. And he's going around to each and every mayor of, of the region and talking with them because he wants a collaboration. It's not just about having a hockey rink in Palm Springs, it's about what the region's going to bring. So it's a 10,000 seat stadium. Uh, their season will start October uh, 2021, which is two years from now. 
they believe the stadium will be uh, up and running within about a year and a half and their season will start and they haven't named it yet but Chuck and I spoke to them we want a really solid name um, tough name yeah tough name um, nothing like uh, the, the Pink Panthers or anything like that. We want a tough name. Uh, so with that said, uh, he's working on that. He's working around the Valley. So some of the leaders in the Valley might be able to meet him. Uh, I think he's going to be very visible. And they want a partnership with Desert Hot Springs and knowing that a lot of the workforce comes out of here. So that was a great meeting. That's all I have tonight. So like I said, I made it short. We're going to get into our meeting. Before we go into public hearings tonight, I know I have quite a few staff members here and I wanna move administrative item number 11 up and do the report from the lead leadership education uh, action and development team. Um, this is a receive and file report, but I'd like you guys to come on up and give your report, please. And then you don't have to hang out the whole meeting. I know Colleen loves to hang out during our meetings, but no. Good evening, City Council, City staff, and residents of Desert Hot Springs. My name is Lynn Paul. I am the Public Works Analyst from the Public Works Department. I'm a member of the inaugural lead team, and I'd like my team members to introduce themselves. I'm Patricia Villagomez in the Planning Department. Colleen Michael, Building Department. Melissa Purcell, City Manager's Office. Angelica Villalobos, Finance Department. Vicky Alvarez, Police Department Records. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Daniel McVeigh, Code Compliance. Da Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, you took on this committee with a bunch of women on it, and you knew what was going to happen. But, but, but he was being such a gentleman. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Daniel, are you married? Yes. That's why you're so patient. I understand it now. Yes. We're all nervous up here, so. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to offer my thanks to my team members, especially Dan McVeigh. <laughs> <laughs> City staff, Eddie Johnson, for his help with our raffle prizes, and to the public works maintenance staff, without their involvement, this event would not have happened. Our thanks also goes out to all of the sponsors, Brad CM, CDG, Desert Hot Springs Spa, from the Earth Foundation, Miracle Springs Resort and Spa, Arco AM PM, Desert Valley Disposal, Easy Party Rentals, Guy Edwards, Mission Springs Water District, the UPS Store, and Walmart. Dan. Lead, lead stands for Leadership, Education, Action, and Development, and is made up of one member from each department. The program encourages communication, teamwork, and creativity between employees and city departments. Throughout the course of the program, city staff learn more about how each department functions both independently and cohesively. The lead team were taught philosophies and strategies for better leadership, public service, and community involvement. The first lead team began their program on April 3rd, 2019. A team leader was chosen, the lovely Lynn Paul. Her duties were to make sure that all members attended the sessions and worked with the team to prepare the I'm sorry, to prepare the questions that were going to be asked of department directors. She was also the liaison between the team and the assistant city manager for the community project. Once the questions were formulated, they were sent to the department directors, which consisted of the city manager, the assistant to the city manager, public works, community development, finance, human resources, the police department, the city clerk, and the deputy city manager. The teams found the presentations very insightful and informative. Each director provided their unique approach to leadership, which offered insight to how their departments function. It was interesting to have a glimpse of their personal lives while learning about their professional lives. So once the sessions were completed, the team began discussions about what we would like to do for our community project. With the help of suggestions from Nick Hacker, our public works manager. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> the team decided to have an event where we could introduce the residents to city staff and organizations that provide services to, to them. Meet Your City Night was born. Weeks of preparation for the event took place with each team member taking on an area of responsibility. 
City departments organized fun zones where the community was able to enjoy free food, play games, and participate in purchasing raffle items for the opportunity to win prizes and sponsor the Veterans Wall. City tables included a dunk tank, pie eating contest, sack races, face painting, chalk wall art, cotton candy, raffle tickets, sales, photo booth, fire truck, snow cones, slide, petting zoo, and popcorn. There were various organizations that pr provide services to residents along <clears throat> with other vendors at the event, where a food vendor, a DJ, and a live stream mobile blood bank. Rotary Club high school students were on hand to help city staff with their fun zones. The ultimate goal of the lead event was to promote interaction between city staff and local agencies while raising money for the Veterans Wall of Honor Fund. Raffle prizes were provided by many, many generous donors. Eddie Johnson, our Veterans Park caretaker, worked tirelessly in letting the pub public and local businesses know that there was going to be an event and that we needed raffle prizes. Thank you, Eddie, for all your hard work and dedication. The lead team is proud to announce that we raised a total of $1,669.87. Thank you to everyone who had a hand in raising these funds. We hope that everyone enjoyed the event. We'd like to thank the city for the wonderful opportunity and wish the future lead team teams as much success as we've experienced in participating in this program. We've prepared prepared a short presentation for your viewing pleasure. So when, we, when Melissa asked me what I wanted to volunteer for, she never said there was a pie eating contest. I made several announcements. All there was, Mayor, is a dunk tank. Can you please be in it? Uh, they're doing nothing else that day, and all of a sudden I show up, and there's a bunch of things going on, Melissa. sponsors. We've been having a lot of technical difficulties. That's why we're building a new city hall for you guys. So. Sure, why not?
<laughs> Again, thank you guys. Um, I do have a couple of comments from the city council. Yeah, um, another round of applause. I tell you, this was a great event. I actually had fun, even though I got very, very wet. Uh, but you guys epitomize what the goal of this project, the overall lead thing is. And you guys were outstanding. I had a number of comments from residents about how wonderful the event was, that they would like to do it again next year, and I'm sure all of you want to pass this on to the second lead team for them to do next year because you all worked so hard on this one, and it shows. And it shows as well, I think, how much of not just employees and workers and, and council members and, and that that we are, we're, this is a family here. This city is a family, all of our residents, all of our staff. I, I count all of you as friends. I think you're all absolutely fantastic. We have the best staff of any city in the Valley, and uh, I, I, just, I just salute you. I think it was an absolutely fantastic event, and uh, you know, if it were up to me, I'd give you all a day off, but it's not up to me. I was actually really quite, the, the slideshow was actually quite good. The, the crocheting guy in the corner was actually my partner, Eric Harris, and uh, he had a blast doing that. So uh, thank you for that, and good job. Any other comments? Yeah, Mr. Gardner, what's this business about a year from now? I just, we're not, they're talking about doing this sooner than in, in a year, right? You guys are like maybe, what, two months from now? You're doing this all over again? Well, there'll be another lead group. Three months? There'll be another lead group coming through, yeah. Two more. I, well, I heard the same comments that you did from everybody else. We need to do this more often, and more often wasn't, okay. wasn't once a year. If you guys stop talking, I can send these people home because they have to come back to work tomorrow. I gave them the day off. No, that's right. Ms. Pye, you had something? I, I, I saw your faces once a year. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We're going to move uh, back to public com or public hearings. Number nine, continue from the October 1st, 2019. Applications for implementation of the Tuscan Hills specific plan, a master plan residential subdivision, and a proposed 334-room re resort hotel and spa located on the vacant 554-acre property located along the north side of Pearson Boulevard, east of Foxdale Drive. The applicant is the Walton Group and Management, Southwest U.S. A, before we start, I think, Mr. Griffith, you have a conflict? Uh, yeah, I, I have to recuse. I was on the Planning Commission when this came before it, so. Anyone else have a conflict? All right, Mr. Griffith, you're excused. Once he's off the dais, our Community Development Director, Rebecca Deming. Staff is still working with the Walton Group to um, update some of the documents, so we're just recommending you continue the public hearing to December 3rd. Thank you. I need a motion to do that. Motion I'm sorry, first, is there any public comments on this at this time? Uh, the public hearing, I still have to open up the, do I have to take comments now, or do, because it's being continued, I don't need to take comments. If there's anybody willing, uh, wishing to speak, I didn't see anybody, so therefore you could just go ahead and continue. Is there anybody wishing to speak on this? I see none. Okay. Uh, Mr. Betts? A uh, motion to continue to uh, December 3rd. There is a motion and a second. Uh, any other comments? Please vote. Nothing's coming up. Councilmember Betts? Mr. Griffith is off the dais. No, uh, Councilmember Betts. Mr. Betts, did okay. you vote? Oh, thank you. He did vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, all right, I'll grab Mr. Griffith. Uh, Mr. Mayor, while he's coming in, in the interest of time, uh, it's okay if I go ahead sure. and accuse. Uh, this item here seems to involve um, an area of where our hair salon, White's Hair Salon, is right in the middle of it. We have a business, so um, because of proximity and the way the rules go, I am going to recuse and uh, not participate in this discussion. Thank you. Anybody else have a conflict on item 10? 
All right, I'll announce the item as Mr. Betts is making his way off the dais. This is the extension of an urgency or interim ordinance adopting a moratorium on the establishment of any marijuana facility as defined in Chapter 17.180 of the Desert Hot Springs Municipal Code or any use or activity related thereto. For properties located in the downtown area near City Hall, specifically on Pearson Boulevard between Cactus Drive and Mesquite Avenue on Palm Drive between Acoma and First Street on First Street between Cactus Drive and Mesquite Avenue and on Acoma Avenue between Cactus Drive and Palm Drive. Ms. Deming. Thank you, Mayor Council. On September 3rd, after a duly noticed public hearing, the City Council adopted an interim ordinance temporarily prohibiting marijuana facilities within the subject area. The City Council amended the underlying ordinance to include language that shall not affect current existing approved entitlements or existing operations located in the subject area from being able to expand their businesses to adjacent properties and exempting parcel number 639-293-029. If this is not extended, if the underlying ordinance is not extended, it will expire on October 18th, 2019. However, the City Council may extend the underlying ordinance for a period of 22 months and 15 days from the expiration date. The proposed ordinance before the City Council proposes to extend this or ordinance for a period not to exceed 22 months and 15 days. If passed, this proposed ordinance would take effect immediately. Thank you. We'll entertain questions of staff. I just have one. Um, we had a special circumstance at the last meeting. That person has f uh, processed all their paperwork so they would fall under the category of the exempt? That is correct. All right. Uh, any other questions? Mr. Mayor, yeah, members of council, um, before we open it up to public hearing, I just want to make a quick note that on section five, which is on page uh, 16, excuse me, 18 of your packet, um, there's a typical uh, a typographical error. Um, the date in the first, uh, the very first line should read October 18th, 2019. Jim, rather did, than did August. Did you catch 4th. that? No. You're slipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. There, there's about 700 dates in this. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I did not catch that one. That one's my fault. So it I, should say October 18th, 2019. I joke. Jan Pye is kind of our, our librarian when it comes to stuff. She reads almost every every word and checks spelling. So um, with that said, there's a uh, correction on the date. So when we get to a motion, if we get to a motion, that would need to be amended. Um, with that, I'll open the public hearing at this time. I will take, oh, I'm sorry. Was there any more questions for, for staff? No. I will open the public hearing at this time. I can take, take testimony in favor of this project or this moratorium. I see nobody coming forth. I will take testimony that are opposed. I see no one. I'll take testimony in one in neutral. I see no one. I will close the public hearing at this time and go back to council discussion. Any more questions for staff? I will entertain a motion. I would move we accept the staff report with the correction of the date. I would second. There is a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously on this adoption of an extension urgency interim ordinance of the City Council, adopting a moratorium on the establishment of any marijuana facility as defined in Chapter 17.180 of the Desert Hot Springs Municipal Code or any use or activity related thereto for properties located in downtown area near City Hall, specifically on Pearson Boulevard between Cactus Drive and Mesquite Avenue, on Palm Drive between Acoma and First Street, and on First Street between Cactus Drive and Mesquite Avenue, and on Acoma Avenue between Cactus Drive and Palm Drive. The ordinance takes effect immediately. Thank you very much, Mr. City Clerk. If we can invite Mr. Betts back in the audience, or back to the dais. Bex is back on the dais. We'll move to the administrative calendar, or back to the administrative calendar. Item number 12 is a resolution of intent to annex one parcel, annex number 37, located east of Little Morongo Road, north of Dillon Road, APN 665-110-006, to the City of Desert Hot Springs Community Facilities District number 2010-1 services. Mr. You're not acting anymore. You're actually the finance director, Mr. Buckheim. Yes, thank you. Officially now of tonight. So. Um, this item is a resolution of intention to annex a 16-acre non-residential property 
into near the on Dillon Road near Little Morongo Road into the community community facilities district number 2010-1. Um, this would then make the property levied a special tax to be able to cover uh, property and street and type maintenance costs in the in the district. If approved, a public hearing will be scheduled for Tuesday, November 19th. Staff recommends adopting a resolution declaring its intent to annex the territory. Mr. Mayor, motion so moved. Unless you need to do something else. Um, I'll take a motion in a second. Can you just move it? Yep, he moved it, moved the resolution. Is there a second? I'll second. And is there any public comments on this? I see no public comments coming forth. Any other discussion by council? Please vote. Sorry about that. I predicted there wouldn't be any public comment. Hmm. Motion passes unanimously. Move to item number 13. There's a resolution of intent to create a special tax area zone for property APN 665-110-006, located north of Dillon Road and east of Little Morongo Road to the Dutch Hot Springs Special Public Safety Tax Area. Mr. Buckeye. So this item is also a resolution of intention to establish public zone, safety zone 43 on the, on the same property as in agenda item number 12, uh, the public safety um, tax area. This, uh, the zone will then levy a special tax to support public safety services. If approved, uh, a public hearing can, will be scheduled on Tuesday, November 19th. So staff recommends adoption of the resolution of intention to establish public safety zone 43. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak to this item? I see none. Any council member comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. As soon as I get a motion and a second on the screen, please vote. Motion passes with Council Member Betts opposed. That concludes our agenda tonight. There is a uh, portion of this agenda that's for public comments. If anybody didn't, could not make it to be in the meeting, was there anybody who would like to speak in public comments that were not here at the beginning of the meeting? With that said, we do have a special meeting next week. Uh, Mr. Uh, City Manager, it's on the housing element, correct? Is there anything you'd like to add about the special meeting next week? There'll be two items, the housing element and also a, um, uh, an item on the grocery outlet. All right, this will be your time of that, Mr. Mayor? Um, I was getting to that. October 22nd, which is next Tuesday at 6 p.m. here at the Carl May Center. The housing element is part of our general plan and this is a piece that needs to be updated and we'll have, this is a public hearing and it is time sensitive, that's why we're having a special meeting on that. Uh, this is for our state compliance. With that, if I have no other comments, uh, we are adjourned.